worship his lordship. Sometimes we need to shift the box, the template that we lock God in. And just, just let him have his way. Whatever he desires to do. However he desires the flow. We just tap into the flow. Just move with the spirit of God. Amen. Because he is Lord. But God bless you. God bless our connected community. Let's give our connected community a hand. God bless everyone that's here, all our guests. Amen. And amen. Let's give each other a hand. Amen. Thank God for you all being here. Um, we really enjoyed. I, I came for just a small part of yesterday's instruction to the ministry team. And uh, what I heard was a blessing. And we always honor, amen. Amen. Uh, amen. The uh, prophet Downer, thank God for, amen. Her. My man George, he's all right now. Uh, I'm going to tell you the truth now. As much as we love prophet Downer, I be looking for George. <laughs> And they just had a great time yesterday, and, and we're going to, I've already uh, mentioned to Sister Yolanda, listen, let's do a follow-up meeting soon to what was instructed yesterday, because it's one thing, you know, you ever go to a conference, and you hear all this great insight and revelation, and then you go back to your local church, you say, man, they're they doing this, and they're doing that, and all that, and then you don't know how what you just learned fits into your local assembly. And if there's no space and no place for it, then you get all frustrated because you've been enlarged by revelation, but then you've been marginalized and minimized because there's no room for what you just received. So I said, well, let's get together. Amen. Let's do it soon so that we can talk about how what you've all learned and what's been imparted, how it fits into this local assembly. Amen. Amen. So we're going to do that soon. We honor that. We thank God for that. A couple of things I want to just bring up before we, amen, bring Prophet Downer, amen, up to minister. One is uh, we have a, amen, we ask everyone to save the date for our 10th anniversary. Amen. Amen. Our 10th anniversary. We're going to celebrate it on Saturday, August the 10th. Our speaker is going to be Apostle John Eckhart. He's going to be with us. Amen. And hey, we're going to have tickets available soon. We ask, amen, everybody, just, amen, come and celebrate. Amen. We tried to keep the ticket price as low as possible, $100. Amen. My family was on the family thread yesterday. My son went to Subway and spent $20 on a combo meal. My God, things are getting out of hand. So we kept this ticket price for $100, and that, I think that's buffet style. You know, plus, amen, we know that Apostle Eckhart is a tremendous man of God, and it's, gonna be a, it's just going to be a, a weekend that's just going to transition and just blow the roof off the place. So, amen, August the 10th, amen, join us, be with us. Uh, follow our website for more information. Also, our Model Man Ministry. Model Man. A model man is a man that, uh, amen, observes the things of God first. A model man, amen, takes care of his body. A model man takes care of, does the inner work of the soul. Amen. So men, amen, on our website, sign up. Some of you have signed up. Some of you just haven't got around to it. Sign up, and we're going to launch the model man ministry on Father's Day. Amen. Amen. Because if anybody should exemplify what a man looks like in the earth, it ought to be a believer. Amen. True masculinity, true faith, true husband, amen, and even know how to get the money. Amen. Amen. So, amen, sign up at our website. You do not have to be a member. Amen. In the first book, we're reading The Strong Man at Tough Times by Ed Cole. Amen. God bless you. Uh, last thing is the, we're going on a seven-day fast, a seven-day seek. Yeah! 
<laughs> Amen. And let me tell you, I started to, I wanted to move and give plenty of time for us to adjust our grocery list um, and move it to the end of April. But I just, originally I got April 22nd. I tried to move it to the 29th and I just, I just got that check. April 22nd. April 22nd. And we're going to minister a word I believe God has given me to kick the fast off next Sunday. And we're going to tap into a new series. A new series is time to come up higher. Let's go up higher. Amen. And we're going to be ministering in that vein. So on Monday, April 22nd, we'll have a seven-day seek. We're going to be praying in the morning. Evening, we'll have more information for you uh, on the website and next Sunday. I don't want to take the time to go through that now. But the fast will consist of as raw as you can get it. Vegetables in the morning, fruit salad, uh, a smoothie, natural in the afternoon, vegetable salad in the evening or switch it, uh, lentil, totally natural, vegetables as raw as you can handle them. Amen. Don't cook all the nutrients out the vegetables. We're going to be seven days. Amen. We're going to be a seven-day seek starting next uh, Monday, a week from Monday. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. Well, God bless you. Listen, at this time, we... Uh, we so appreciate the prophet, and I know you guys have your expectation. How many, amen, come with expectation? Let your faith rise to a new level. Amen. I believe there's healing here. I believe there's deliverance here. I believe there's breakthrough here. I believe there's blessing here. How many believe that? Let's put a demand on the anointing of God. Let's put a demand on the mantle. How many are ready to receive? Come on, say, it's my time. Look at somebody, tell them, it's my time. I know you're here, but it's my time. My time for healing, my time for deliverance, my time for breakthrough, my time for blessing, my time for encounter. It's my time. So let's receive, amen, prophet Donna, amen, just by putting our hands together and giving God praise for this gift. Hallelujah. Can can you hear me? You can hear me? Okay, I can't hear myself. (laughs) Hallelujah. Well, after that worship, I just had to bow to the king. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to get a sense of what direction the Holy Ghost wants to go. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for that worship. We thank you for this powerful, gifted team and the intercessors and the musicians. We thank you for planning this house at this time in this region, Lord God. We thank you for all the people that would be drawn to this place. A healthy church where they won't be damaged, wounded, controlled. Father, but they'll be trained and released to do your will. We thank you for what you're doing in this season and in this hour, in Jesus' name. So I'm just going to try to go with the Holy Ghost. I was up about 4 o'clock in the morning just getting this word together, and um, I got like five pages of information. I'm not going to preach that much information Mm. again, but I'm going to try to give you as much information as possible. And I have a strong teaching gift, so... I want to apologize now if I don't make you hoop and holler. It's just not my thing. Amen. I want to impart some information on the inside of you. So let me just start with this. So I want to present, honey, can you help me? I went back and forth because I'm over trying to promote material. Amen. And I really didn't want to do this, but I want to present this to you and your wife. So the Lord told me from now on, when you write material, give it to people and tell them plagiarize you take advantage of the information amen Amen. so i want to bless the man and woman of god with my last two workbooks that i have created which is the weapons of our warfare 
a lot of times we as Christians quote the scripture, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God, but we can't name the weapons. Uh, it's about 10 weapons that we need to know and we need to use. And so this workbook will help you understand those. I want to present that to your apostle and the woman of God, the prophetess, so they can take the information, break it down, and teach it to you. Also, there's a workbook on evangelism. What I found is a lot of Christians don't know how to win souls. They don't know how to win souls. They don't know how to lead anyone to Christ. They tell them, come to my church. That's great. But what if they died that night that you met them, when you could have got them into the kingdom that day? Amen. So I give breakdown step by step, one, two, three things to help you understand how to win souls and even how to help people uh, get rededicated if they're falling away from God. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand for that. I'm just going to go. Yeah, you know what, honey? You're so prophetic. I wanted to bow to them in honor of the work that you all are doing. But I just want to release the prophetic over you all now before I get started. Because once I get started, I'm going to try to be like a whirlwind and pour out this information. Amen. Are you guys are you guys taping? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you even now for the grace upon your leaders. Even now I hear the Lord saying, you have done well, my son. You have done well, my daughter. Now I will make you model marriages, a model marriage for the marriages in the community. Many people will be drawn to you. And yes, I've even give you somewhat of the blueprint, but I'm getting ready to make it more detailed so that you can help people not just stay married, but even those that desire to be married. I see a strong singles ministry, people being drawn to this place to learn how to prepare for marriage. The Lord says, I'm going to give you the blueprint and the anointing for impartation and activation. The Lord says, you will also be known as a training center. I'm getting ready to send my people that will begin to be raised up in this hour, say of the Lord, because I've tried and I tested your heart. And the Lord says, good job, son. There were some adjustments that you needed to make in the, in the area of pastoring and shepherding my people. But the Lord says, I send this word to encourage you to let you know I'm proud of the adjustments uh, that you have made. I'm proud that you made a decision to seek me on how to shepherd my people. The Lord says, now I give you your own flavor, your own anointing, and your own way. The Lord says, the Lord, the, the, I hear the Lord saying, daughter, I'm going to take you up in the spirit. I'm going to begin to show you some things some things that are to come. And the Lord says, begin to write. I don't know if you start working on this book on um, prayer and intercession. The Father says, begin to write. Make the vision plain. So that the people can understand how did you grow? How did you get to the place where you are even now? And the Lord says, I'm releasing a new grace and a new anointing for the deliverance mantle to rest upon this house. It will be known as a city of refuge, says the Lord. A place of healing, says the Lord. A place where people will say, you can go to that church. You can trust those leaders. They're not going to put shackles on you. They're not going to damage you, wound you. They're not trying to look for people to rule over but they want to make you rulers the Lord says good job now I hear the Lord saying don't worry about your children know that I have them I see a daughter and I'm even walking through her house even now I see some things the Lord says I'm even causing her to clean up some things even now I'm dealing with her heart I'm dealing with her thoughts I'm dealing with the people that are around her and know that your children will be a treasure to the kingdom of heaven. I let you know that the, the history is already written in heaven, that the ball and the mantle will not drop. The baton will be passed. There will be a legacy. The Lord says, don't worry about what you see. Keep pressing and keep praying, says the spirit of the living God. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. All right, let me try to get some of this information. So I just want to say thank you for the pastors. Listen, they were catalysts for helping me believe in a gift that I didn't even know. I mean, I knew I could cast out devils, but I didn't know I could teach and train other people in deliverance. And they were the catalysts that really pushed me. And so come on, give these leaders a hand. 
And then I want to tell you, can you please give my husband a hand? I don't do this very much, but the Lord convicted me. He said, you better not take advantage of him. He is a gift. He be driving me all around. <laughs> I be fussing. He say, I be bossy. And he put, up, <laughs> he put up with me, and I really appreciate that. Come on, give him a hand. And then I want to acknowledge my family came to surprise me. I have my cousins, my cousin on the front row, and my cousins. Come on, you guys, can you stand? I know y'all probably like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. They surprised me. I love you guys. They always show up. Ah. Uh. They always show up. They love George, too. I think my family loved George more than me, too, Pastor. And then I want to thank all my friends. Can you, have, can you please stand all those that have been some of my disciples, some of my intercessors, people that have followed me. They just showed up and surprised me. I really appreciate you. I want to honor you all today. Amen. Thank you for your presence. All right, let's get down to business. And then I want to thank all of you for being in the house of God. You could have been anywhere else. We were driving. We seen some people that were on the golf course. Amen. All right. It's 1117. I want to time myself. And the Lord gave me a word. And he told me to tell everybody that we have access to everything that we need. And he said, it's time to grow up to go up. The man of God just said, <laughs> y'all getting ready to go up. He said, but it's time to grow up to go up. Amen. I'm going to start in 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, 1 through 3, if you read with me. I'll be trying to look cool and not wear my glasses, but that's not working today. <laughs> I had to put them glasses on. All right, Second Peter. It says, Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. A lot of people are looking for peace. And here's the answer to how to get it. Not only can you get it, it can be multiplied in your life. But it has to be through the knowledge of Jesus Christ our Lord. If you don't take the time to study the Bible, if you don't take the time to get to know God, you're going to be looking for peace in all the wrong places. When God says everything that you need, what you need, can you can have it, plus it can be multiplied. He said, according as his divine power have given unto us all things. Listen, it's not human power. This is divine power. So that means this will work. And it has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. When you begin to make a decision to follow Christ, to get to know Christ. Listen, not just go to church. I'm not being disrespectful. I have to say this a lot, but it's more than just you coming to church. If you don't make a decision to get to know Christ for yourself and have a personal relationship with him, if you don't read your Bible for yourself, you're not going to know him. Everything about God, everything about Jesus, everything about the Holy Spirit is written in this word. He tells us what he likes, what he doesn't like. He tells us what he desires from us. And so we have to get in the word. And as we begin to develop a knowledge of him, all things, not many things, not some things, and not maybe, but all things will be provided unto us. There is a secret knowledge that you can tap into, and there are abilities that you can tap into as a human being because we are more than just flesh, and we are more than just our emotions, and we are more than just thoughts, but we are spirit beings. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, you are a spirit being? We were created after the image of God. That's why we have dreams. Could you understand why you go to sleep at night, but yet you seeing full movies in your sleep? How is that possible? Because your spirit does not sleep. 
your spirit is still getting information while you're unconscious to this world. That's how powerful you are. And God wants you to tap into the spirit today. Amen. All things that we need pertain to life and godliness. Some of us have businesses on the inside of us. Some, some of us have dreams that we've let go because we figure we got too old and when I went to school, this is what I wanted to be. It didn't work out that way. But I'm here to tell you today, prophetically, let life come back to that dream. You can let that, li that dream alive uh, again. So recently, if, the, the more I walk with God, the more he unfold, okay? So I, I knew what I was supposed to do 10 years ago. I knew I was called to help people hear God's voice. I knew I was called to help people pray and have an intimate relationship with God. And I knew I was called to do therapy and help people with their emotions to get stable in life, right? What I did not know, well, I knew I was supposed to start a school, but I was too afraid to do it. So I waited 20 years, and everywhere I got, people prophesy, you're supposed to have school, you're supposed to have school. And I walk away. I think they meant I'm going to go to school. <laughs> I went. Amen. Praise the Lord. I fulfilled that prophecy. I went to school. No. I had to start a school because I was thinking in my brain that I had to have a building, I had to have chairs, I had to have desks, I had to pay. Listen, I was barely paying our bills at our house. Now I got to pay bills at another building. I began to look at everything that told me in my brain why I could not do it when all things have been provided unto us. The Lord says the reason why you haven't done it is because of fear. It's true. I didn't, I didn't argue. But he said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, not a feeling of fear, not thoughts of fear. This is a demon spirit that comes inside of us. It go to bed with you. It wake up with you. It go to work with you. And it talks to you all day long. We should not be listening to a spirit of fear because he said, what I did give you is power love and a sound mind. If you don't have a sound mind, then you have got a demon living inside of you that you got to get free from. So the Lord said, you got to get beyond that. You got to get past that. And you have to believe me. He says, Charmaine, true faith is believing what you cannot see and believing that it, I can do it. One of the things that my apostle Harvey Hester always used to say, he said, true faith is not you asking God to do something and then hoping and wishing he do it. That's not true faith. True faith is knowing what God promised. Maybe God give you a dream. Joseph had a dream, right? Maybe God gives you a vision. He gives you a dream. Anybody ever had a daydream? We get all those, right? And true faith is believing what he said and what you saw. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, true faith is believing what he said. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans that I have for you. If I say you can do a school, then you can do a school. He said, your problem is you are full of pride. I said, well, God, I, I'm not full of pride. I, 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 I'm arguing with God. I got low self-esteem. Pride is when you have high self-esteem. You think more highly of yourself than you are, right? And the Lord said, no, you got it twisted. You have pride. He said, because you shouldn't have low self-esteem. You shouldn't have low self-esteem. He said, this is what the Lord told, told me. He said, Charmaine, I say in my word, you can do all things through Christ, right? And you say, well, I can do all things except hear God's voice and speak a message for him because I'm not a prophet. I say you can start a school. I say you can start a business. I say you can do this and do that, and you turn around and tell me all the reasons why you cannot do it. He said, that's pride. Because the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down emotions, imaginations and taking every thought captive, right? And it says, and every high thing that exalts itself above what? The knowledge of God. So I'm giving you my knowledge. I'm God. I'm saying you can do it. 
That's my knowledge. But this high thing that's inside of you is telling you you can't, and you're agreeing with the high thing instead of agreeing with faith. Now, you exalt your knowledge above what my knowledge says you can do. God said you can. You give all the reasons why you can't. He said, that ain't low self-esteem. He said, because you shouldn't have high self-esteem, low self-esteem, or no self-esteem. He said, the whole thing about low self-esteem is the focus is on self. And I want you to put the focus on me. I have given you everything you need for life and for godliness. So I said, okay, God. I'm going to be like Peter. I'm going to get out this boat. I'm going to start this school. The moment I decided to start the school, then the Lord told me what I had to give up. I said, well, <laughs> now I done gave up drugs. I enjoy drugs. They made me feel good when everything around me was going wrong. I done gave up, you know, being with more than multiple partners. I done gave up alcohol. I done gave up partying. I've given up a lot, God, to serve you and serve your people. So the Lord said, I want everything. The Lord came to me six years ago before I launched the school. Finally, I had enough faith after 20 years of saying no to do the school, right? He said, so I want this thing right here. Y'all want to know what it is? Y'all nosy. <laughs> I wouldn't tell people for a long time. I was embarrassed, right? But my husband would dog me out. Look at the great. Prayer warrior prophet. I said, well, God, I only have a few guilty pleasures. I don't want to give this up. He know what it is. I didn't want to give up love and hip hop. I was like, get him. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't fight no more. God told me I couldn't fight no more. I was like, slap him. You know, it's like, <laughs> God said, you got to get that up. <laughs> you got to give that up. You know why? Because the television is disrupting the visions that I want to put in you. I want to download vision. This is how God speaks. I want you to write this down. It's three ways that God speaks. The verbal communication of God. This is through preaching, through teaching, the still small voice on the inside of you, somebody prophesying to you. It's the verbal voice, right? Then there's the picture language of God. This is where we get dreams and where we get visions from. I used to call them deja vus because that's what the world call them. God said, don't call my stuff what the world call it. It's not a deja vu, it's a vision. When you have a vision, it's like a preview of the future. Anybody ever seen a preview of a movie and you're like, ooh, I'm going to see that? Then you get in the movie, you're like, that's the part, that's the part. But what they do on the commercial, they just give you a snapshot or just a small preview to try to pull you in, right? God do the same thing. We don't have deja vus. He gives us visions of the plans that he has for us, the possibilities of what we can do. But most of the time, we exalt our knowledge above the knowledge of God. Amen? Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Turn to your neighbor. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. So recently... As I'm walking with God, I gave up. I fought, it took me six years. I was like, I ain't giving that up. But I still prayed and fasted, did everything I was supposed to do, right? Finally, I said, okay, God, I moved to Ohio by faith. 
because I saw it. And when I moved there, for the first time in years, so I don't even know what time, was I 50? I was 50 when we moved there. I just turned 55. I have worked two jobs since I was 14 years old. When I moved there and I started the business, I have not punched a clock. And I've never had a luxury car. I'm paying more out than I've ever paid, and I'm sustained. Is your faith rising? God doesn't want you just to work by the sweat of your brow and kill your body and not go after your dreams. There are witty inventions in this room. There's businesses in this room. One of the things that I tell people all the time is a witty invention. God gave me a whole revelation about witty inventions. That's what God, God is the one that is the creator, right? These people, the, the thing is he reigned on the just and the unjust. So if the just, the Christians won't tap into it, and God wants this invention in the earth, then he got to go to the unjust. They believe it. He had, they his children too, except for they just rejected him. But why let them have all the, all the money and all the businesses? So the Lord told me, I launched the school, right? Then he told me, okay, now I want you to do deliverance trainings. What? I cast out devils. I, ain't, I don't know how to teach nobody how to do it. I want you to do it. Okay. Then he told me last year, I want you to start a book publishing company. Now, I got a prophetic word two years ago. Here I go again with this low self-esteem. Prophet told me, God said, you're going to start a book company. I was like, I ain't doing that. I don't know how. I don't have the money. I don't know what the regulations are to do it. I just didn't want to learn all this stuff, right? Whenever you put information on the inside of you, it creates a neural pathway in your brain. We're amazing. It's like highways. You know, they build a new highway because they need more room to, for traveling, right? Same thing happens with your brain. If you stop feeding your intellect side and your brain, then you will be stuck with the information in there. And so God wanted to keep me moving and keep me fast forwarding. Is anybody learning something today? It is the Holy Ghost that puts something on the inside of you. And the institution, the Babylonian institution, which is the school system, has conditioned us just like an elephant. Y'all hear the story of the elephant that was chained for years? For years, the elephant knew he couldn't go past that chain, right? He tried it, and the chain would pull him back. Finally, after years, they took the, train, the chain off the elephant. Guess what the elephant did? You free, elephant. Brain had already been affected. They tell us to go to school for eight hours so they can condition us to work for somebody else for eight hours while we make them rich and they keep us at the bottom of the totem pole. God wants to release witty inventions and he wants to breathe new life into your dreams once again. Now, I know we're so used to studying the Bible. I don't, I don't mean no disrespect because God gave me this. I went and bought a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you're serious about what I'm saying today and God is speaking to you, I would write that book down. He's not a Christian. But I needed to educate myself about finance and about assets and liabilities and about credit and how to build wealth because I was illiterate. My people perish for what? So I had to put information on the inside of me regarding this. So I read this book years ago, over 20 years ago. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it instilled inside of me that the rich teach their children, go to school, get one degree, go work, and then start a business on the side. Make that business grow until it supersedes the money you're making in your job. Quit your job. Hire some employees. The poor and the middle class teach their children, go to school, you don't make enough money, go get another degree. I owe $77,000 for my, my social work degree. Go get another degree then. 
or you're not making enough money, then go get a second job. Go get a third job. Work yourself until you have a heart attack and drop dead, making somebody else rich. I know this not, I told you this ain't a jump and shout message, but it's the word of the Lord. Hear ye, hear ye the word of the Lord. I'm delivered from trying to make people and get aroused from the crowd to gauge if I'm doing a good job. I was up at 4 a.m. getting this word. I know it is the will of the Lord that we don't work by the sweat of our brow and drop dead. You ain't got to have a big business. So I said, I ain't doing that. Two years ago, last year, guess what the Lord said? Start a book publishing company. I said, that was you for real? Not that I doubted the prophet, but, man, you ain't tell me that. He said, start a book publishing company. I said, Lord, I don't know how to do this. So I started talking to people. Started telling my, my uh, students, I'm going to start a book publishing company. God told me start a book publishing company. God told me, that's how I deal with the school. God told me start a school. God told me, God told me, God told me, right? And then people start handing me books, handing me information. One of my students bought a book on everything you need to start a book publishing company and sent it to my house from Amazon. I read the book. I sent the book to my middle child and said, I need you to read this so you can help me with this. God will send you resources and he will send you help. Don't let fear stop you and don't listen to fear. Fear is of the devil. It's a spirit. It is a living being and it's a liar. So I started the book publishing company. So then the Lord said, start a coaching business to go with it. I said, a coaching business? He said, yeah, you've wrote 13 books. Why give your money to a publishing company? Be your own publisher. He said, and you know the process of writing a book. You know how to do time management. You know how to put the table of contents together. You know how to get a, a, uh, the cover for the book. You know how to put it on Amazon. You know how to get the copyright. You know how to get an ISBN, a barcode. You know all that you need to start a book publishing company. I didn't say you had to be a multi-millionaire big company. They're small businesses, right? Are y'all learning something? Am I building faith? Mark 4, 13, 13 through 24. Mark 4, 13 through 24. Let me get there. Pay attention to my time. Mark 4. All right. It says, and he said to them, know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. Guess what's happening right now? A word is being sown into you. You have to make a decision if you will reject it or if you will move by faith. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Will you let Satan take this word from you today? And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness. Okay, so we geek, right? I can do this. They receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. They just go to church. They don't read their Bible for themselves. They don't even know God. They don't even know God's voice. God be talking to them, they don't even know God's voice. They don't pray at home. They have no root. And so they endure for a time afterward when affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Anybody ever been there? I'm like that. I be whining. I be like, God, you the one told me to do this. I don't understand. It ain't even working. <laughs> persecution will arise. Can you tell your neighbor persecution the enemy is going to try to get you off track. 
The enemy is going to try to lie to you and get you to stop or quit. It doesn't matter. I don't care what persecution comes. I don't care what happened to me. This body right here can go in the dirt, in the ground. The enemy cannot have my soul, and he cannot have my spirit. So I'm not even afraid of death. What will happen if I launch out, step out, and believe God, and start a company, start a business, and it flops? I'm not going to die. So I might as well try. Hey, look at me rhyming. I'm not going to die, so I might as well try. I'm not going to die, so I might as well try. All right. <laughs> if that was the Holy Ghost, I didn't try to do that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Verse 17, they have no root, affliction, and persecution. Please write that down that it's going to come. The devil wants to scare you. He wants to put up scarecrows. He wants to make you give up and make you quit. One thing about me, if it don't work this way, baby, I'm going to go the other way. If it don't work that way, I'm going to go under. If it don't work that way, I'm going to go over. I'm going to find a way. Because God said all things that pertain to life and godliness it's already given to me. So either I believe that or I don't. I just got to figure out how to get on the other side. One of the things that they taught us in um, social work, they said the true definition of a problem. Honey, will you bring me my shoes? The true definition of a problem. Because as social workers, as clinical therapists, people come in and they need help solving their problems. But we don't solve their problems. We work with them and come up with the best solution that will fit their life. Because ain't no point in me telling you what to do. You go home, you don't do it. So you figure out what you think you will do. Amen? And so the true definition of a problem, that baby is okay. Don't be nervous. I have four kids. People used to stare at me. And it made me, I had just come off drugs. I'm like, what y'all looking at? Y'all act like I'm making the noise. It's the baby. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm trying to get saved. <laughs> I want the baby to be quiet too. <laughs> Don't feel nervous, okay? No, we have to make people feel comfortable. We want them babies in the house of God, amen? And so, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> what was I talking about? Yeah, so the definition of a problem. Thank you. So they told us the, defi the true definition of a problem, it means to leap forward. It's like a Chinese proverb. But what happens when we have a problem, guess what we do? We hit a brick wall, so we fall back instead of leaping forward. The problem is there not to stop you. The problem is there to put information in you that you don't have. You gotta figure it out. You gotta solve the problem because there's no more information that you need to help you get to your next destination. So the problem come to try you, not stop you. Don't ever let a problem stop you, amen? So I started telling all my friends. The Lord was like, Charmaine, you got to do marketing. You started the business. Good job. Don't nobody know you got the business, right? <laughs> and so I had to learn how to do marketing. So I went and bought two books, right? They ain't Christian books. They books on marketing. And mostly social uh, uh, on the internet marketing, right? And it, I got these two thick books, and I'm looking at them like, I am not trying to do that. <laughs> I got enough on my plate. The only thing left, only thing left is some room for some ice cream. And I tried to put no more information on my plate. So I got to learn marketing, but the Lord said you have to do it, right? So I started telling everybody, I started a book publishing company. <laughs> I'm doing a coaching business. If you need help writing your book, you know, you can hire me and I'll help you write the book and, and then we'll move over to the publishing, right? So one of my friends who's a social worker, she said, let me be your first client. When I wrote my first book in 2009, she was writing her book. I've written 13 books. Guess how many she's written? None. I said, I'll help you get that book birthed. I'm a midwife. I can help you do it. 
That's why God told me to do the coaching business, to tell people, once you birth the first one, you ain't got to, you won't need me for the second one. Amen. You got it. You will learn the process. So she, the first question she asked me is, well, what happened if you get writer's block? I said, there's no such thing. Here we go, a problem, right? How many people believe in writer's block? You get writer's block, right? I said, there's no such thing. I said, when you're writing, the Holy Spirit is the creator, not of this world, of the universe. The Holy Spirit is the creator of the heavens and of the earth. You don't have to worry about a block. Because when you come to the end of your information, fast and pray. And the Holy Ghost will start downloading more information. Amen? She was like, you're hired. That's what was blocking you all these years? If you just ask, if you just talk about it, if you just look for the resources, somebody got the answer to what you need. Amen? Somebody got some money. I heard the, the rich people say spend other people's money. Now, I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but I'm going to work on it. <laughs> Mark 4, 13 through 24. I'm almost done. Y'all learning? Verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful and these are they which are sown on good ground such as hear the word receive it and bring forth some 30 fold some 60 fold and some a hundred come on lift your hands but well, father i just pray right now as we hear the word that the word would germinate take root on the inside of us that it will grow that we'll begin to hear the word and we'll move and act on the word lord god I pray that you give us dreams, activate their dreams, talk to them in their dreams, activate visions, let them begin to hear your voice like never before, and let the resources come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Let the angels be released according to Hebrew 1.14. You said they were sent to serve the heirs of salvation. All right, I got one more uh, scripture that I want to read to y'all. Y'all okay? Y'all not bored, are you? All right, let me give you this information. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul says, When I came, I wasn't trying to use impressive words. I'm done with that. Because I was trying to learn how to preach because I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have anyone to develop me, so I was watching how everybody else do it. Now, I'm just doing it the way the Holy Ghost told me. Give information so that the people can take the written, uh, take the um, vision that is written or spoken, and they can run with it. Amen? For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power. He said, look, I didn't come with big words to impress you. I came with a demonstration <coughs> of the spirit's power, and I came with wisdom. Can I tell you, you have to go out into the world, and you need to demonstrate the power of God, and you need to have the wisdom of God. There are people out there that are dying and they're going to hell. I'm shifting a little bit because the church has gotten off. They have forgot what is the main reason for our existence as the church. This building is not the church. We're the church. We're to take the church to people. And we are to go and preach the gospel and make disciples. This is all about connection. Some of you are on jobs with people that you know they need help. Instead of whispering in the break room, why don't you offer Christ to them? Or why don't you take them out to eat? Or why don't you take them out to lunch or take them for coffee and begin to just talk to them, have regular conversation. Don't try to chum no scriptures down their throat. Just make the connection first. And then once you make the connection, Jesus, 
Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men. First catch the fish. We're all going to be judged when we get to heaven. And it's going to be based on what you did in the earth. Amen. Let me keep reading this so I can get out your way. And my speech and preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man. He said, I did this demonstration of the power of God so that your faith wouldn't stand in man's wisdom. But in the power of God, how be it we speak among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. He said the wisdom that we speak is not worldly wisdom, is not the wisdom of this world. And we speak it among those that are perfect. That word perfect in the Greek means those that are mature. So from the time we are birthed into the kingdom of God, we should be growing. And nobody is responsible for your growth. When you stand before the Bema seat of judgment, when you stand before God, well, my pastor didn't preach that. Well, my apostle didn't preach that. Well, they didn't tell us that. But you got a whole Bible at home that you could have studied to show yourself approved. God tells you in the Bible what you are, who you are, what he wants from you, what you have, all the resources from heaven. Yesterday I was talking to the uh, team and I said, you know, come on, y'all are ministers. And a few of them was like, well, I'm not a minister. Yes, you are. If you come to church and you let somebody preach to you, what are you doing that for? The Bible says he gave gifts to man, the apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist for the perfecting of the saints. This is so you can be perfected. He said, I talk to the perfect. I talk to the perfect. Other people won't even understand what I'm saying right now. Because it's not man's wisdom. It's a heavenly dialogue. So we're called to perfect the saints. And what do we perfect them for? To give them a title and a position in the house of God? Yes, you need that because we need help in the house of God. We need helpers. We need people that will put their hand to the plow. But the real reason why we perfect the saints is so that you can go do the ministry. Go do the ministry on your job. Go do the ministry in your neighborhood. Go do the ministry for your family. I got family members that are drug dealers. They see me reading the Bible Monday through Thursday online, and they text me secretly, cuz, pray for me. Sure will. And I send them prophetic words. He said, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom of God, which God ordained before the world unto glory. Listen, there is a language that is spoken in a mystery, and it's hidden wisdom. You should write that down. Because Job 33 says, in verse 14 through 17, it says, God speaks once, he speaks twice. Man does not perceive it. It says he speaks in a dream and in a vision. In the night, he opened the ears of man to instruct them. But because we're so used to just getting preached to and teach to and getting prophecies, when the wisdom of God, which is the Holy Spirit, comes into our dreams to give us information, we don't even try to investigate what do these images mean? What is the language that he is speaking to us? Or even when he gives us visions. He speaks any kind of way. I look for God in everything poster boards, sign on the highway, magazines, commercials on TV. God, I, I, my kids, I, we went to go see the Lion King. I was like, Rafiki is the prophet. They were like, Mom, we add a cartoon. I don't care what you say. Nala told him, you down here talking about Hakuna Matata. You down here with the people that eat the word, and you the king. I said, that's a revelation. <laughs> We have to look for the voice of wisdom, and that voice is the Holy Spirit. I'm almost done. Verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for they have, if they had known it, they would have crucified the Lord God of glory. 
If the princes of this world understood the wisdom and the language that Paul was releasing, they would have crucified, they wouldn't have crucified Jesus. He came in secret code. Do you know God wants to talk to you? The Lord told me, he said, Charmaine, I'm not sending everybody to prophesy to you about your life. You can quit being a prophetic junkie. No, I was because I was, it was new to me. I didn't know God used people to talk. I, I grew up in a Baptist church. Ain't nobody never told me about prophets. Ain't nobody tell me God talked to people. So when I came into contact with prophets, I was excited, like, oh, my God, these people know stuff about my life. And so I started following them around. The Lord said, I said in my word in 1 Corinthians, you know in part and you prophesy in part. He said, I'm never going to give anybody all that I want you to do in your life through a prophecy. Anybody trying to find out what God wants for their life through a prophecy? It's okay. Don't be scared. I was. The Lord said, the reason why I will not do that, because you'll be lazy, Charmaine. You won't come to me for yourself. So I hide some of the information. Do you know there's a scripture in the Bible where the scripture says this information has not been hidden from us, but it's hidden for us. Jesus himself said, I'm glad, God, that you have hidden this from the wise and revealed it to babes. Babes. So you don't even have to be a prophet or an apostle to get this secret information about your life. But God wants to reveal it to you. Well, you're going to have to press in. I'm going to tell you what to do, okay? Verse 9, it says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them. God's prepared some things. It says, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. And the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. I asked God, I said, wait a minute. My eyes have not seen it. My ears have not heard it. My mind has not conceived the plans that you have for my life. So I can do what you put me in the earth to do. I want to do this, God. Whatever it is you put me in the earth, I want to do it. But my eyes have not seen it. My ears have not heard it. My mind don't know it. I said, well, how am I supposed to know it? He said, go back and read it again. He says, but he has revealed it by his spirit. I said, wait a minute. He said, read it again. Has revealed. Now, anybody in third grade, they tell us that those words are past tense. I'm like, hold up. If, if your spirit has revealed what my eyes can't see, my ears can't hear, my mind can't conceive. How do I know it? I don't know it. He said, because the clue is my spirit is the one that reveals. Have you made a relationship with him yet? He's the revealer. You're trying to chase relationships with everybody except for my spirit. And the Lord told me, you have to know me, God the Father, know Jesus, God the Son, and you need a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit. Each one play a different role. You should write that down. Each one plays a different role in your life. Amen? So he said he has revealed it. He said, Charmaine, that's why I said the spirit will bring all things that I told you to your remembrance. Now think about it. How are he going to bring it to my remembrance when it's in my memory? Ain't remembrance the memory? Is it not in there? Mm -mm. Because some things are stored in a short-term memory. Some things are stored in a long-term memory. Some things are forgotten. And some things are stored in your heart. You'll never forget it. I bet you you don't forget your PTSD. I bet you you don't forget your trauma. But we forget what God has said. So if you forget it, go read it again. All of it. And then listen for the voice of wisdom to bring it back to you concerning you. Where he'll make it tailor-made, right? Then he said, 
For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man of God, no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Can you write down, we didn't receive the spirit of the world. This is important. Because some of us did receive the spirit of the world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says the God of this world has blinded the mind. Your mind, not your eyes. There's darkness in your thoughts. That's why you got to pour more information in there. And continuously pour the word of God in there to bring light to the darkness that the, the enemy wants you to believe that you can't. The enemy wants to tell you that there's no way possible. The enemy, these are all lies and it's all darkness in your mind. He said you didn't receive the spirit of this world, but 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 said he is the God of this world. So who is the spirit of this world? Satan. Why would you receive anything from him? The Bible says love not the world, the things of the world. Don't let your mind be blank and under siege. Write that down from this day forward. Don't let your mind be taken captive. Don't let your mind be in the dark about God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and what God wants you to do in the earth and eternity. When we get to heaven, you're going to meet God. He's going to ask you, what did you do with your life? How much of your life did you live for what I wanted? Remember, I was like, God came to me. and He was like, I want you to give up love and hip-hop. I was like, I don't know about that. He wanted me to give up some things. He's going to talk to me in, in heaven about that when I meet him. Amen? It is so important that we continue to grow. I want you to write down Hebrews 6, 1. It says, let us go on to perfection. Those things in Hebrews 6, 1, laying hands, eternal judgment, faith, dead works, we as believers should know what they are, and you shouldn't be waiting for your pastor to preach it to you. Go study it. Go find some books on it so God can illuminate your mind. I'm telling you how to be successful right now. And check everything that somebody preached to you. Check what I'm preaching to you. Write them scriptures down and go back and see if it's really what it is. Because a pastor told me when I was 27 years old, coming off of drugs, four small kids, my husband struggling with alcoholism. Someone prayed for me to receive the Holy Ghost. And I told a friend and she went and told on me. I'm in the Baptist church. They called me to the church. He called me to the church and rebuked me. There is no baptism of the Holy Ghost. It don't exist. Actually, he did speak in tongues, and it did exist, but he felt it was for the elite only. And I'm opinion. I'm a nobody. And I, I do got a little bit of a smart mouth. I ain't going to lie. But I was raised. They beat the mess out of us, so we was respectful. So I said, well, Pastor, I don't know if it is or not. He's been preaching since he was 15. He know Greek. He know Hebrew. I don't know none of that stuff. And I never read the Bible. I only knew the stories that they taught us when I was a little girl. But I knew my, my life was a shambles. And I was trying to be with God now. So I told him, I said, well, Pastor, I don't know if it is a baptism of the Holy Ghost or not. But you preached in Bible study that we should not seek God's hand for what he can give us. We should seek his face. And right about now, I'm up to his elbow. Now, I don't even know the Holy Ghost gave me that or not. I don't know. Let me say this last thing. We have not received the spirit of the world. Check yourself when you feel like you can't. Check yourself when you feel like you're drifting. From God, is this the spirit of the world? It's a spirit. It's not a feeling. It's a spirit that's trying to suck you into the world stuff, right? 
I remember I told God, I said, I feel like I'm stuck. He said, there's no, thing, no such thing as being stuck. I said this yesterday. He said, time doesn't stop. The world spins. The sun spins. There's no such thing as being stuck. So, Charmaine, you're not stuck. Either you're moving forward with me or you're sliding back. We call that something, a backslider. But you're not stuck. You don't like to read your Bible no more? You're in a backslidden state. You don't want to pray no more? It's not based on feelings for me. I understand the importance of my life and God wanting to talk to people who are suicidal that I may meet on the streets and I have to be carrying something so I don't pray based on feeling. I can't backslide. Verse 11, you didn't receive the spirit of the world, but you received the spirit of God. Can you write that down? I received the spirit of God. That we may know the things that are freely given unto us. There's some things that are free. We don't have to fast for it. We don't have to pray for it. The price has been paid. Deliverance is free. Salvation is free. Healing is free. Witty inventions is free. It's free. Love is free. Peace is free. Joy is free. Those things are free. He said, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but in the words the Holy Ghost teach. Write this down. Do you know the language of the Holy Ghost? Do you know when the Holy Ghost is talking to you? Remember the cartoon, the devil on this side, the angel on this side? Which voice do you listen to? God speaks to us. Pay attention to the voice. Amen. The Holy Spirit, I'm going to just give you these last things. He is our counselor, our comforter, our advocate, our teacher. He's the spirit of truth, spirit of grace, spirit of holiness. He's the spirit of God, spirit of the Lord. He's the spirit of wisdom, spirit of knowledge, spirit of might. The Holy Spirit embodies everything that we need. And he's not floating around us. I haven't figured this out yet. He's in us. When you receive salvation, automatically you get the Holy Spirit. But then we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit because God promised that he would send the Holy Spirit and you will receive power. So we need power to resist. I needed power. When I was coming off of drugs, my husband needed power when he was coming off of alcoholism. I needed power not to walk away from our marriage. I needed power to pray him through and pray myself. I needed power not to give up when people rejected me in church, abandoned me, hurt. I've been hurt in church. Man, everybody got that trophy. So what? Let's keep going. We're warriors. You don't get to be called a warrior if you ain't got no battle scars. You ain't won no battles. You running from churches? Don't run from God. Prove to him. You're worth it. He sent his son to die for you. Be a warrior. I was talking about this at the table yesterday. <laughs> Write this down. Elmer L. Towns, T O W N S. Elmer, E L M E R, L Towns. The name of his book is The Names of the Holy Spirit. This book changed my life. I know God, I know some things about Him. I know Jesus, He's my Savior. He's at the right hand of the Father. He's my chief priest. He's praying for me. He's my high priest. I know he died for me. I didn't know the Holy Spirit, and I didn't meet him until I was 27 years old. And even then, I didn't know I needed a relationship with him. There are no limits for us. This body of believers today, it's not by chance you came. 
It's not by chance you came. There's gifts inside of you. There's talents inside of you. And all businesses, God told me this. He, share, he said, Charmaine, all witty inventions or all businesses is not a company or something physical that you can hand to somebody for them to buy. Some businesses is based on service. I provide a service. But it's still a business. I have a school. I provide a service. I teach. People pay me. I'm making money in my sleep with books on Amazon. I wake up to somebody bought a book. God wants to give us witty inventions and residual income. Did you learn something today? Tap into the Holy Spirit. Make this be the year that you develop a relationship with him. That book, man, it's almost 300 pages. I got, there was so many pages, I got bored. I was like, not bored, but you know, I was like, when is this book going to be over? I don't like big books. <laughs> That's just me because I'm lazy. I'm lazy, but ask my husband, I'm going to do the work. But I know that about myself. I don't have to fake that, and I'm not afraid to say that. But I do have to have good time management. And I have to have discipline because I know I'm lazy. Amen. I want to ask, is there anybody in here today that's not saved? Can everybody close your eyes? If you're not saved and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I don't care what they tell you, hell is real. It is real fire. And there's not... A trillion years, God will change his mind. You'll be there for eternity. He'll remind you all the times you could have accepted his son's sacrifice of his life. You'll have all your memories. Flesh will hang off your bones. Worms crawling out of your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Someone say you shouldn't scare people into heaven. I was scared into heaven. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you the truth. We don't tell the truth no more. If you haven't received Jesus Christ, the free gift, as your personal Savior, I want you to just slip up your hand. If you want to receive him today, just slip your hand up. Amen. If you know you're in a backslidden state, you don't have the fire you used to have. You don't have the walk with Christ that you used to have. And you want to rededicate your life. I want you to slip your hand up. Amen. It's nobody's business. Keep those eyes closed. I see those hands. I see those hands. Yes, be honest with yourself. Can't nobody see you. It's between you and God. The enemy hits us. My mother died. My bishop died. Her husband died. And the prophet that helped me believe in myself all died in two years. I said, God, right when I told you yes, I got hit in the stomach and the wind was knocked out of me. I couldn't pray. But I was honest with myself. So I stayed around Christians that were strong so I wouldn't get lost in grief. Come on, you can put those hands down. I'm going to pray a prayer. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, please forgive me. I know I'm not where I used to be. And I've allowed people and life and hurt to make me angry with you, them, and myself and I ask today that you will forgive me and that you will restore me in Jesus name